Peter and I, I can't get over it. And uh, I mean, you've been there for Anna for me time and time again. You know, I, I love the country. I love the people of, uh, of this state. I have to tell you how much I really do love the people of this state. Woo! And, uh, and I, I'm just going to, normally I give a campaign pitch, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, I really want to just tell you why this is such an unusual place to live and, and why the character of the American people is so inspiring. I mean, my, my own experience is from, from just being here three years and being part of the Olympic experience here. Uh, made me uh, fall in love with the state and the people here. And I just just a couple things. I, I see, where is Dan Gardner? I see, there's Dan Gardner over there. So he I mean, he was assigned to bring some Paralympians to the games, all right, to be the transportation, to put them up in his home. He was kind of <laughs> put them in his home. He got some Armenian uh, Paralympians. These are kids that had either one arm missing or a leg missing or a couple of arms missing. And, and they came here with old equipment old wooden equipment, wooden skis they came here to, to participate in, in sport. And so what did he do? He and his neighbors went out and contacted Rosignol Ski Company and asked them if they'd donate skis. They donated $21,000 worth of ski equipment to them. They went out and raised money and bought them parkas and coats. This, this happened time and time again, where, where people around Utah brought in these athletes, in particular for the Paralympics, those that came here from really tough situations, both physically and, and financially. And, and people here opened up their homes, housed them, drove them to events. It was amazing. And then, of course, there was this the beginning of the Olympics itself. Fraser Bullock is here somewhere. Fraser knows this story. Where's Fraser? Wait here. He was here. He ran out. <laughs> He's down around somewhere. Anyway, Fraser and I were, were worried because the, the, the reputation of the Olympics was appropriately sullied. Uh, there were people who were talked about sending the Olympic Games back because of the, the conditions in which we'd received them. And, uh, and we wondered whether, given the bad reputation that was associated with the Olympics, whether we could get the volunteers we needed. And we needed about, we needed about 25,000 volunteers in the Olympic effort, and then about 4,000 more for the ceremonies, at least 4,000 more. There's almost 30,000 people we needed to volunteer. And this is not that big of a city. And the, and the 40,000, the, the, the 30,000 people, rather, as those of you know who were Olympics uh, volunteers, they got no tickets. People don't know this. They think, oh, to volunteer, you've got a bunch of tickets to events. Got no tickets. You got a uniform. That was it. And with that, you stood out in the parking lot and directed traffic, all right? <laughs> this was not glorious work. Uh, or served food. Or worked with the magnetometers and checked people's bags. I mean, that, it, was not, it was not, you know, glory Olympics. This was hard work. 17 straight days. No pay. No glory. No tickets. We wondered, can we get 30,000 people? And, uh, and holding our breath, we went up on the, the website. We, uh, we opened our website to get volunteers to sign up. We went on KSL and, and on radio and said, you know, you can now sign up to be a volunteer. And we were hoping we'd get 30,000. We got 47,000 people in the first week, as I recall. And uh, it was amazing how people said, yeah, we're, we're, happy, to, we're happy to serve. Just, a, just a, a, an experience unlike anything I could have imagined. Uh, and you know, uh, Ed Einan, who was the guy in charge of the volunteer effort and, and the human resources, he would say to people in this video that we played to them, this will be the best experience of your life. And I thought, Ed, you know, you're kind of overselling a bit. You know? <laughs> I mean, really, this, I mean, it's, uh, uh, and, and he said, no, no, you won't believe it. He said, this will be, people will love this. And I thought, well, long story short, there, there's not a, a month that goes by that I'm not on Delta Airlines, and of course, given the fact it's hubbed here, I'll, I'll find a pilot or a flight attendant, they will come up to me and say, you're Mitt Romney, right? Yes, I am. They'll say, I volunteered in the Olympics, and it was the best experience in my life. I hear it time and time again. It's just uh, we, served, we served the world. They came, they came here. They, they saw the spirit of the volunteers, the people of this state and walked away saying these were the best games ever, and they couldn't figure out exactly what it was. But it was the people here. And, and most people said it was the volunteers that made these such extraordinary games. There was something else, too. Mother Nature smiled on us, I have to be honest. Uh, we, we had an inversion. You may recall, we had an, those, I think everybody here knows what an inversion is. If you're from Lake. We had an inversion going on, and we went to the stadium. This was one day before opening ceremonies. We went to Rice Eccles Stadium, and, uh, and we looked at the field. From the top rows, you could not see the field. That's how, that's how bad it was. And we thought, we sold these tickets for $1,000 apiece. 
and they can't see the field. And by the way, the fireworks we bought, they're not real good, you know, in inversion type conditions. <laughs> and, uh, and we were very worried. I talked to the mayor, Rocky Anderson, remember Rocky? And, uh, <laughs> Could we not? So we did, we did, so quite some Can I see? And so the, the night before opening ceremonies, a huge windstorm came through. I mean, massive wind. And it, it blew all the inversion out. By the way, it blew our decorations out too. And uh, we had to remount those in a big hurry. But, uh, but Rocky called me and he said, you know, almost thou convertest me to be religious again. <laughs> <laughs> almost, not quite, almost. And, uh, but it was, and then at the end of the games, you may not have heard this story, but at the end of the games, we were getting ready for closing ceremonies. And, and we, had a, we had a firework display. I hope you understand how extraordinary they were. The fireworks were 24 inches in diameter. These are the biggest in the world. A fellow came over from Asia to, to bury this in the, in the ground, the, the mortars that shot these things off. They cost $20,000 per firework. And we had five sites around the valley where we were setting off those fireworks. The, the cloud from the firework was approximately a mile across. I mean, we've never seen anything like this in this country. We were so excited about these fireworks. And at the closing ceremonies, we also had these big balloons that went up, and athletes would dangle from the balloons, I mean, they're big balloons, and do acrobatics. And all of this was exciting for us, except we had a storm coming across from the west. And the meteorologist said it would hit about 15 minutes before the end of closing ceremonies. And so I had a phone with me in the, in the president's box where we had Vice President Cheney, where I was in contact with the guy that was managing the closing ceremonies and going through it. We said, can we speed it up? We, Gosh, light off those fireworks and have those balloons go up. And, and, uh, and, and, uh, and it was coming across, coming across where the meteorologists from KSL and others were tracking as it came, as it came, as it came. And, uh, and it looked like we were, we, were, we were sunk. And it got right over Great Salt Lake and stopped. A wind from the east came, came from the east and it held up. And this huge storm with 50 mile an hour gusts was just sitting over Salt Lake, Great Salt Lake. And it sat there for about 10 minutes. And, and during that time, we lit off the fireworks, we got the balloons up, and people began leaving the stadium. And, uh, and we were so delighted that that storm had been held up. And then, I happened to look, I was doing interviews with the media after it was all over, happened to look out the window. We wondered who was gonna do the cleanup with all these Mylar vests we had. Those 50 mile an hour winds hit. I'll tell you, those Mylar vests are all over Jordan. I mean, those things, they blew, they blew out of the state. It was just so, Extraordinary, and for 17 straight days, beautiful sunshine, a little snow sometimes in the air, just magnificent. These were the most wonderful games, our memories, the world's memories of this place, the people here, the beauty of this land, uh, the spirit of the people of Utah you, you is something I will never forget, the people of the world will never forget, and so I say thank you tonight to you for helping one more time. <laughs> Taking the job at the Olympics 